Hello! Today we thought we'd talk a little bit about tools. Yes, tools, mainly power tools. We did make some mistakes with our tools. We didn't buy the right tools at the right time, uh, which would have saved us a lot of work. So maybe we can save you a bit of time and a bit of money by going through some of the right tools to get from the start. Uh, we're not going to talk about the really obvious tools, which everybody's going to have anyway, like a screwdriver and maybe a hammer and a saw. Yeah, they're too obvious, aren't they? We're going to talk about something a little bit more clever. For instance, power tools. You are going to want a drill and a screwdriver or a screwdriver drill type power tool. Uh, how much you spend is up to you. Obviously, you can buy budget, you can buy expensive or somewhere in between. But of course, if you can buy good quality, if you're going to be working in walls, especially your stone walls, if you want to attach anything, do anything like that, you're going to need a hammer drill, not just a regular drill. Again, the sky's the limit. I got this one, Black & Decker, reasonable quality, half the price of a good quality one. You've got to make your choice, really, what you want to spend. Um, but it's got to be a hammer drill to get into stone or concrete. Something else you're going to have to buy if you're on a farm is a chainsaw. Um, for various reasons, cutting firewood, cutting a tree out of the way because it's blocked your road in a storm, <laughs> anything like that. I did buy a petrol chainsaw of not great quality, but average. And it worked fine for a couple of years and then it just broke down. I rebuilt carburetor, but it still wouldn't work. And I was tearing my hair out. And in the end, I decided I'll take the plunge. There are electric chainsaws. There are battery electric chainsaws. And here we have my Einhell battery electric chainsaw. We've mentioned it before, works off two 18 volt batteries and it's part of their battery exchange system. Einhell is not a premium brand, it's the cheap version of Bosch, actually. Um, but I have quite a lot of Einhell tools and I've never had a problem with any of them. The great thing about the electric chainsaw, um, be it powered from a cable or from the battery, uh, several good things, actually. Very quiet. It's kind of always on while you're using it in that you can just put it down, move things around and you pick it up, press the trigger and it goes again. You don't have to leave it running with the noise and the smell. You don't have to keep buying petrol um, so you don't get the fumes around you either. There's basically no more cost afterwards. I've mentioned I inhale like these guys. Um, this is just my experience. I like them. Certainly not getting paid to advertise their equipment, but for a budget brand, I've never had a problem with any of them. And a great thing about Einhell is, although their stuff is made in China, they are distributed from Germany. And if you go onto the Einhell website, you will find that for most of their stuff, you can actually get spare parts, which is pretty amazing. I have an electric um, jigsaw of theirs. The little attachment that holds the blade in place broke. I ordered a new one, fixed it. Not many things you can do that with these days. So that's obviously a really good point, not only for you to be able to fix your stuff rather than just throw it away and buy a new one. It's good for the environment. Okay, another thing you're going to need is a strimmer or one of these big ones with a petrol engine. Properly known as a petrol scythe, or if you're American, it's a weed whacker. We do have sheep. They do eat quite a lot of grass, but they can't eat everywhere. And what tends to happen is that all summer, there's nothing growing, really. Part of the winter, there's nothing growing. But as soon as you get some rain, boom, everything just shoots up. And suddenly, if you don't start cutting it down, you're not going to be able to move anywhere. So that's where one of these comes in very handy, unless you, unless you have to have a tractor with a, with a grass cutting attachment on it, which most people don't have. So you're gonna to have to go for one of these decent petrol scythes. Again, uh, how long is a piece of string? How much do you wanna spend? This is 
a budget version. It's good old Einhell again. If you want to get a top name one like a Honda, fine, good for you. It's going to cost you five or six times the price, literally. Having said that, I would buy Honda if I had the money because I like Honda. I have a Honda motorcycle. You might think, well, what about a lawnmower? A good size, heavy duty-ish lawnmower, maybe even a ride-on mower. Actually, no, forget it. On the farm like this, it's just too uneven. There's too many rocks around. It's just not going to work. It's an interesting little tool, if you can call it a tool. If you're clambering about on a ladder or up on the roof and you need some nails, uh, it, it's quite handy just to, to put them on here. And there they are. You don't even have to reach into a, into a pocket or a bag. It's called a magnetic bracelet thing. That is a hammer tucker. It's basically a big stapler and uh, it's very, very fast and useful for tacking things into place where you would normally use a little kachink stapler. This is much more fun. If you're living off grid as we, <laughs> as we are, you will need a generator. You may think Portugal is all warm and sunny all the time, but actually that's a myth. In the winter, there are often extended periods of grey, drizzly, wet weather, sometimes very grey, and your panels, even if you have a nice big system, won't get enough power in, and you will need to have a, a generator backup, a way to charge your batteries. So we have two generators. We have a bigger one here. We use this for our big water pump. Uh, of course, we can use it for other things as well, as needed. This one has a 12 volt uh, outlet, 12 volt DC outlet. Uh, it, it could be used to charge a battery, but you will need obviously to think about your power requirements. This one is a 2300 watt output maximum. If you're going to need it on occasion, perhaps to power your whole house, you're going to need something substantially bigger than this, or maybe you don't need one as big as this. Living off grid, you might need a generator to uh, to use power tools as well. This one was actually about 250 euro. Again, it's a budget model, but I've not had any trouble with them. I do, I do service all my power tools quite regularly, which means cleaning them out, checking the spark plugs, um, and this one checking the valves, changing the oil. You know, don't skimp on that. Otherwise, your budget model will end up costing you a lot of money because it won't last very long. One thing we didn't buy because we were thinking oh, expense we want to save the money but with hindsight we wish we had bought and i wish i had it now is a mitre saw uh, if you don't know that's a saw that has a big circular blade and it sits on a stand and it kind of lifts up and you put your wood in and it goes zip zip like that so you can get really accurate consistent cuts um, after about, that's a bird on the roof <laughs> or a cat. <laughs> after about two years of sawing, my sawing did improve, but it's nowhere near as good as a mitre cut. And especially when we were first here, where we were doing lots of cutting and yeah, a mitre saw would have been a good idea. This is our other generator. This is a little iron hell. It's just an 800 watt generator, but uh, I bought it specifically so that I didn't have to use the big generator if I just want to use power tools. Also, we use this when Katya wants to charge up her laptop. Oh, look, doggies. When, lap when Katya wants to charge up her laptop, there's plenty for that. Also on very gray days, when the battery in the house isn't getting any charge. While we're charging the laptop, we can simply plug in the battery charger, attach it to the battery, and that charges up the battery at the same time. 
So that's a, a very good plan, a, a small generator plus a battery charger and you're always going to be able to top up your battery on bad days. Another thing you, you could do of course with this arrangement, uh, the generator and the battery charger is, if you had a problem with your car battery and you're out in the sticks like we are and there's no neighbour immediately around to get help from, obviously you can just uh, charge your car battery up with this and hopefully get it going that way. A level. You are going to need a level, even if you're building something very, very simple. Don't do what we did and buy a cheap level and then break it, and then buy another cheap level and break it. Instead, do what we did third time first. Come here, Rita. Here. You're disturbing the video. You're making noises. So, you can go in your favourite place, which is the car. There you go. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! Uh, what was I saying? Levels. We asked for a strong one and we were recommended this one. It is very solid and heavy. And of course it's small, it's short, but with a, a straight edge, you can turn it into a long one. So you don't have to fork out and buy a hugely expensive two meter one of these. Ready, Didi? <laughs> and now we're going to talk about wheelbarrows. You need a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow will be your employee of the year. Yes. And another thing about wheelbarrows. You see the wheel? It's an integral part of a wheelbarrow. Absolutely 100% recommend going for this type of wheel, which is solid. It's not pneumatic. If you go for a pneumatic one, you're going to get a puncture. It's going to be a real pain in the derriere. Solid ones like this, yes, they cost twice as much. Something like 30 euro-ish. But you'll never have to worry about a puncture. You'll never have to worry about overloading it. And this will outlast the rest of the wheelbarrow. So you'll be able to put it on your next wheelbarrow. Another plus of having a wheelbarrow with a crazy dog is that you can play with dogs like this. <laughs> Come on, Rich. Get it. 